And I don't want to ask you this question to depress you, but in your life, who is on your side 100%? And now I'm going to ask you this question. Who's not on your side 100%? Maybe it's time to let them go. Today, we're going to be talking about how to support the people that are around you to grow into who they're supposed to be, but also how to make sure that you become the person that you were put on this earth to be. So is this an important episode? Hell yeah, I would say it's a pretty freaking important episode when we're going to talk about this. And to start off, I want to give you an analogy. Have you ever saw, like, actually sat down and thought about how amazing a seed is? Like if you've ever just held a seed, within that seed is, even though it's this little teeny tiny thing, is the potential to grow into something amazing and beautiful. If it's treated the right way, if it's taken care of, that little teeny tiny seed will grow into something amazing and beautiful. Sometimes if you get a little bit of a bigger seed, it could turn into a massive tree. But within every single seed is the potential to become this big, amazing plant or tree or flower. And I want to talk to you about this, kind of dive into the seed itself, but I want to talk to you about a flower going that seed route and a gardener. Now, what is the gardener's job to do with that seed and with that flower? What is his job to do? His job is to allow the seed to become what it is supposed to be, right? To give it space, to nurture it more than anything else, to treat it exactly how it needs to be treated, to give it water, to give it sun, to give it air, to create the space for that little teeny tiny seed, that flower, to become the best version of itself, to grow to its highest potential. And the more that it takes care of it, the more that seed will become what it is supposed to become. Now, what happens if it doesn't get all that? What happens if it doesn't get the water that it's supposed to get? What happens if it doesn't get the amount of sun that it's supposed to get, or maybe too much sun? What happens if it doesn't get enough air? It doesn't grow to its full potential. The seed, the flower does not become the flower that it could become and is supposed to become. Let me ask you a question. What if a, the gardener goes up and takes a mason jar, flips it upside down and puts it on top of that flower? What would happen to it? It would restrict its growth, right? It might become weaker because it's under that mason jar. It might start to have its branches and its leaves and everything start to, to wither away and fall off. It might kill the leaves and it might even kill the flower. So a gardener's job, only job is to nurture that seed to become the most beautiful flower that it could possibly become. And through the nurturing, that flower becomes the best flower that it could possibly become. Its job is not to change it. He's not supposed to change it. He's not supposed to restrict it. It's just supposed to nurture. That is the only thing that it is supposed to do. So now I wanna take that analogy and I wanna put it into your relationships. I wanna talk first about the people that are in your life and how you're showing up for them. And then I wanna talk about you and how the people around you are showing up for you. So in your relationships, if you're the gardener, right? Every person that around you, that's around you has this ultimate potential of what they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to become, and who they could become if they have the right environment to do so. So if that's the case, how are you showing up for the people that are around you? How do you show up? Do you nurture them? Are you really nurturing for them, for their ideas, for their hopes, for their dreams, for their desires? Are you watering them? Are you giving them enough light? Are you giving them enough air? Are you helping those around you bloom to their true potential? Are you? Your job is to help them grow into who they want to become, who they were put here to become. Not, this is very important, not what you want them to be. Not what you want them to become. So if we talk about, for instance, let's take your significant other, right? And you could take anybody and put them in this, this position, but let's just talk about your significant other. Are you trying to mold them into what they could be and help them grow into that? Or are you trying to mold them into what you want them to be? Are you trying to make them into what you think they should be and push them into what you think they should be doing? Or are you sitting there nurturing and loving them no matter what it is that they're going through? Are you trying to help them grow or are you trying to change them? Think about that for a second. 
It's an important question. Are you trying to help them grow into what they truly feel deep down inside they want to become? Or are you trying to make them become who you think they should become? How are you showing up for them? What type of gardener are you for the people that are around you? Now, let me ask you, if you have children, how are you showing up for your children? Are you restricting their growth? Are you not allowing them to do the things that they want to do? Are you trying to force them into the hobbies and the sports and the activities that you want them to be doing? If they want to be artistic, are you trying to you know, shut that off and make them go play sports? Or if they want to go play sports, are you trying to shut that off and trying to make them go into music? How are you showing up for them? Because ultimately, there's something inside of them that says, I want to go do this. Whatever you want to call that, intuition, God, whatever it is that's inside of them that's giving them this drive to go do this one thing, are you trying to push them in a different direction? Or are you saying, oh, okay, this is your interest. How can I support you? How can I help you deepen that interest? How can I help you get better? Or are you trying to restrict them the same way that if you were to put a mason jar on top of a flower, it's not going to grow to its true potential. So think about that. I know a lot of parents that restrict their children. Are you so afraid of what they could have happened to them that you don't even allow them to go and experience the things in life that they're supposed to experience because you're so terrified of what could possibly happen to them out in the real world? Because we all know we have to go through stuff to grow. So are you trying to keep them away from all of the struggles in life? Are you trying to keep them away from everything that could help them grow into who they want to be? You know, I remember this, it reminds me of this really sad story. One of my friends, uh, their, their grandmother died and their grandfather was still alive. And so they went up into the attic and they were starting to help clean and you know, change some things around the house. They went up into the attic and they were sifting through things in the attic and they found these beautiful paintings, like these amazing paintings. And they could tell that they were old, 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 old paintings. And they, there was like four or five of them. They're like, these things are incredible. These are beautiful. Whose are these? So they take them down to their grandfather and they're like, hey, did grandma paint these? Like who, who painted these? Where'd you get them from? He's like, no, those are, those are my paintings from when I was younger. And they're like, you painted? Like we, we've never seen you paint. I never knew that you were a painter. And he's like, yeah, you know, well, I only painted up until, you know, my, my late teens. And I tried to keep it away from my dad because he wanted me to go into sports. And this is a true story. So don't take my words of what I'm about to say as if I'm saying them. But what he said was, you know, he told me I couldn't paint anymore because it was too gay, right? Like, so in the thirties or forties, whatever this was, it was seen as quote unquote gay to be going and becoming a painter. And so he shut it off and he never painted again. Just, just think about how terrible that is, that a child has this natural inclination, this, this great talent and skill to go do something, and that, that he just shuts it off. I never want to be that person for the people that I love. I don't know about you. Do you want to be that person for the people that you love? I don't. I want to help them grow. If I see a talent or a skill that they have, I want to help them get better and deepen that interest and that skill of what they have. So then, you know, now that he was free and he was older and they said, hey, grandpa, what if we just gave you some painting supplies? They brought over some painting supplies and he started back up again and he made these amazing, beautiful paintings. And it was like he came alive again. There was a piece of him that died 50, 60 years ago and he was able to bring it back to life. Think about that. Are there places in your life where you're restricting people that you love and not allowing them to flourish when really you should just be there to support them. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. And it's, it's sad. I never want to be that person for someone that I love. But how many of us are doing that? And not in big ways like, hey, don't paint, but little teeny tiny things. We're trying to mold them and little, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't, don't make those jokes in public. Don't speak up. Hey, John, don't say that, right? Just little teeny tiny cuts. It's like death of a thousand cuts because of all these little teeny tiny restrictions. And slowly, but surely, slowly, but surely, slowly, but surely, we restrict who we truly want to be. Oh, don't dance in public. You look stupid, right? 
How many times have you done something like that? Said, told someone not to say something that they thought was funny. Told somebody not to dance where they wanted to. Told somebody not to do this. It's like death of a bunch of little teeny tiny million cuts that's out there. Your job is not to change those around you and to mold them in who you want them to be. It's to help them become who they were put here to become. I don't know about you, but I have the belief that everybody has some sort of role that they're supposed to play on this earth. Whether you want to call it God gave it to them, the universe gave it to them, or it's just something that's deep down inside of them. I believe that everybody has something that's deep inside them that they want to bring out to the world. So now that we've talked about the people around you, I want you to think deeply about that. And now let's dive in and talk about you. Now that we've talked with the people around you, we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about you. How are you showing up for yourself? How are you showing up for yourself? And how are the people around you showing up for you? Are they nurturing? Are they supportive? Do they believe in the same things that you believe in? When you pick up a new hobby, do they talk about how amazing that is or do they try to cut you down? When you go for a big goal, do they try to motivate you and support you along the way because we all need more motivation and support from the people that we love for big goals? Or do they try to chop down your goals? When you succeed, how do they react? This is a really big thing. If you, when you succeed, how do the people around you react? Are they celebrating with you? Are they as happy as you are about your success? Or are they trying to poke holes into every little success that you have? Are they trying to show you how your success isn't that great? Or how they once did better? Do they try to one-up you on everything? Think about that. When, they succeed, when you succeed, how do they show up for you? Usually you can really find out who's in your corner at that point in time. Are they allowing you to bloom into who you really truly want to be? Or, same thing, are they trying to mold you into who they want you to be? Are your significant other, your significant other, are they showing up for you? Your family members, your mom, your dad, your friends, your lifelong friends that you've had for so long, how do they show up for you? Think about that. Most people don't think about the people that they surround themselves with. You know, if a flower doesn't grow, sometimes it's not the flower's fault. Most of the time, it's not the flower's fault. You don't try to change the flower. You try to change the environment of the flower. The amount of sun that it's getting, the water that it's getting, the location, the air. Think about that for a second. Some people are not nurturing you into who you truly want to be and ultimately are supposed to be. So maybe the problem with your growth in life hasn't fully been just you. Now, it probably has a lot to do with you for sure. I do want you to realize that. But it's also really hard to grow when there's other people around you that are, just like I said, putting a mason jar on top of a flower and trying to hold you back because your growth makes them feel like they're not doing enough or makes them feeling significant. And so they try to chop you down and make you restricted in any way that they can. So maybe the problem isn't fully you. Maybe it's your environment. Maybe it's your gardeners. Maybe it's your lack of gardeners in your life. Think about that for a second. In your life, and I don't want to ask you this question to depress you, but in your life, who is on your side 100%? Who is there for you, no matter what, to support you, to help you, to always want to see the best for you, to celebrate your growth? Who's on your side 100%? Think about those people real quick. Think about them in your mind. And now I'm going to ask you this question. Who's not on your side 100%? Maybe it's time to let them go. Maybe it's time for them to, they've played the role in your life for as long as they've been there but maybe it's time to let them go. See, if someone is restricting you or holding you back from who you are supposed to be, maybe it's time to release them. Not to kick them out or to get rid of them completely, but release them. They've played their role. Because ultimately, sometimes you have to release certain people so that you can grow into who you're supposed to be. You can still love them from afar, but you don't have to spend every single day with them. And it's okay. Sometimes life gets hard and it requires you to release people. I've had to release friends, some of my best friends in the world. And I can still be nice to them and still hang out with them every once in a while, every couple of years when I see them or when I go in the town that they live in. But I don't talk to them every day because we're just going different paths. 
and that is okay. Whoever says that it's not okay to grow apart from some people is wrong. It's okay to grow apart from some people. So then if you're starting to release some of your gardeners who suck at gardening, how can you start to get more gardeners in your corner? More great gardeners in your corner, people that love you, people that support you no matter what, people that wanna see the best for you. Because I believe that we all have purpose in this world. Some of us are here to be incredible parents. Some of you listening to this are incredible parents and you are here to do that. And you are doing amazing at that role. How can you deepen that sense of purpose and become even better at raising amazing children? Some of you listening to this, some of us are healers. You're here to heal people. And I'm not just talking about through, a, like if you're a doctor or a surgeon or a nurse, I'm talking about you can heal people mentally, you can heal people uh, emotionally. You being there for a friend sometimes is more healing than anything else that they could have. Some people are here to be teachers. Their skill is to teach. How can you deepen that? How can you get better at that? How can you find more people that support you in your role of being a teacher? Some people are artists. There's so many different roles. What is your role? And if money wasn't an object, if it wasn't something you had to worry about, would you, what would you do with your time? Who would you fit in as? What role would be you 100% if you're like, this is who I am? And how can you get better at that and then find people who help you get better at that and want to see you get better at that as well? Because ultimately, I want you to think of two things. Two things in this episode are extremely, extremely important I want you to think about. Number one, I want you to ask yourself this question. How am I showing up for those that I love? How am I showing up for those that I love? Am I being a gardener? Am I nourishing them? Am I nurturing them? Am I watering them? Am I giving them enough sun? Am I giving them enough love? Am I you know, helping them to become what they truly want to become? Or am I restricting them? Am I walking through a flower bed just stomping on every single flower that's around me? Think about that. How are you showing up for those that you love? And number two, what does my environment look like? The people that I surround myself with, the people that are supposed to be in my corner, who is in my corner and wants the best for me? Who's in my corner 100% no matter what? And who's not? And who do I need to get rid of? It's okay to let people go. It's okay to release people. And what do I need to change about my external environment? What is it that I need to change? We all change, we all grow. And just as a flower, if you've ever seen a flower, sometimes it releases some of the petals and lets them go. And sometimes there's people in your life that their time is gone and you're trying to basically tape their, their petal onto your flower. No, it's time to just let it wilt away and go so that you can grow a new one so that you can become your truest potential. Because ultimately there's the people that are around us that we love that we need to focus on and be the best possible gardener that we can be and nurture them. And number two, there's the environment around us and the gardeners that are around us that we need. We need people to nurture us and to be on our side as well. So just like the seed, the little teeny tiny seed that has this amazing amount of potential, we're all filled with a massive amount of potential inside of us. Our job is to be here and to live up to that potential and to be there for others and allow them to become who they are supposed to become as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. It's okay to not know what your true purpose in life is right now, but it's not okay to not be in constant pursuit to find what that is every single day.